it seems to me we have to start, uh, but we won't stay there, I promise. We have to start with this amazing thing that happened a week ago yesterday in America. No matter what side you were on or who you voted for, I think everybody would agree it was a sea change moment in history. And um, so I guess, David, we want to ask you about that. If you can tell us about this skinny, cool guy with the big ears who has the reputedly great jump shot. Uh, in one of the times, there's a picture of David and Van Draley, uh interviewing, and David, I think, caught up to him in a weight room in a high school gym, Rio Grande High School in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, can he get us out of this mess we're in, or what do you make of him? Tell us something about President-elect Barack Obama. Can he get us out of this mess? Who knows? Uh, we're about to find out. It's, uh, he's got uh, a lot of things arrayed against him. Uh, Washington has not been in a problem-solving posture for many years now. And, uh, but uh, he is, he's fascinating and compelling in ways that uh, no politician I've covered before uh, is. He has a, a many, uh, uh, many ambitious people, especially ambitious men, in my experience, are, um, uh, project uh, a great deal of self-confidence to mask a, a deep insecurity. Uh, they need approval uh, a, a, as a way of filling up a hole inside themselves. Uh, the politicians who have what it takes to get to the top without that um, driving them are, are rare in my experience. And Obama seems to be one uh, he projects, um, a, a lot of reporters around him complain that he's so cool and at a remove uh, that they, they feel like he's stand, standoffish is a word that's often thrown around about him. But he strikes me as, as, as not so much standoffish as that he, he doesn't need to, uh, he, he, he doesn't really care what you think about him because he already knows who he is and what he thinks about himself. Uh, I contrast him with, um, with Bill Clinton, whose campaign was the first that I really covered up close. And Clinton needed to win you over, no matter who you were. Once he met you, he needed to win you over, and he would work hard on anybody. It was kind of a heady experience to have this person who was about to be president, you know, really like trying to impress you in, in a way. Um, Obama would never spend a minute uh, on that because he, he's, he's more about the business and less about what, uh, uh, what you think of me, you know. Uh, he, he doesn't seem to have a narcissistic streak. Uh, it, it might be another way of putting that. Um, I'm dying to get Gene in on this, who, as far as I know, has never covered a politician in his life. <laughs> uh, but uh, Gene is a professional satirist and funny man and a very serious narrative journalist, too. But I wonder, Gene, um, maybe you could slice in on this. And by the way, this will really work if we just jump in and cross-pollinate. Um, the, the late night talk show guys talk about how hard it is to be, how hard it's going to be to be funny about this guy. Uh, yeah, I, can, I, can, I am worried about that. Can, right? he, can, he, can he be properly made fun of? Yeah, I have serious worries about a humor deficit in the Obama administration. <laughs> and there are, there are two, two reasons for it. The first is the guy himself. And David, maybe you can help us out here. But you know, I have read his two books, um, Dreams from My Father and The Audacity of Hope. They are like the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are deep, they're important, and they're totally without humor. Yeah. A and 
Uh, that bothers me. That yes. worries me. Yeah. And, and the second thing is um, what Paul was alluding to, which is, you know, th there's a cliche that, you know, in, in writing humor, you cannot write anything funny about the Holocaust. You cannot do that. What you can sometimes do is write something funny <coughs> about how you can't write anything funny about the Holocaust. <laughs> That's what it's like with Obama. If you look at the humor that, that's being poked at him, it's not being poked at him. It's about how all, everybody's in the tank for him. It's about how you can't make fun of, of Obama. This worries me as a humorist. Uh, I, I, have a, I have a weekly, I have a daily blog in the post. And the day after, and it, it's a humor blog, and people expect it to be a humor blog. And the day after the election, when essentially all of America was, was enraptured at what had happened, the headline on my blog was, hey, Barack, the honeymoon is over. <laughs> <laughs> and what I said was, you have to answer for Michelle's dress. <laughs> I don't know if you remember the dress that she wore on stage, but I said, I said that it reminded me of the before in an antacid commercial. <laughs> <clears throat> this was not well met by the readership. Uh, I, I, I was pilloried for daring to puncture the beauty of the moment. As I said, this worries me. <laughs>